36 or 37? 37? Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto Two, chapter 2, verse number 37, which is the concluding verse in the chapter. Pibhatiye Bhagavatam Atmana Santam Kart Katam ritam shravanana puteshu samritam Punati te visaya vidu sita sayam Rajanti tat charana sararo hantikam Pibati ye bhagavata atmana santam katam ritam shravana 
Bhuteshu Samritam Punati te visaya vidu sita saiham Brajanti tat charana sararo hantikam Chant Bhanti, who drink, yea, those, Bhagavata, the personality of Godhead, Atmana, of the most dear, Satam, of devotees, Katamritam, the nectar of the messages, Shravana Bhutesu, Within the ear holes, Sambritam, fully filled, Punati, purify, Te, there, Visaya, material enjoyment, Vidu Sitat Atsayam, polluted aim of life, Prajanti, do go back. Tat, the Lord's, Charana, feet, Sururuha Antikam, near the lotus. Translation, those who drink through oral reception, fully filled with the nectaring message of Lord Krishna, the beloved of the devotees, purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment, and thus go back to Godhead to the lotus feet of Him, the personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Tai Sisi Gaudanitai Ki Tai. The sufferings of human society are due to a polluted aim of life, namely lording it over material resources. The more human society engages exploitation of undeveloped material resources for sense gratification, the more it will be entrapped by the illusionary material energy of the Lord, and thus the distress of the world will be intensified instead of diminished. Hmm. This is current events right here. <laughs> the human necessary necessities of life are fully supplied by the Lord in the shape of food grains, milk, fruit, wood, stone, sugar, silk, jewels, cotton, salt, water, vegetables, etc. In sufficient quantity to feed and care for the human race of the world, as well as the living beings on each and every planet within the universe. 
The supply source is complete, and only a little energy by the human being is required to get his necessities into the proper channel. There is no need of machines or tools or huge steel plants for artificially creating comforts of life. Life is never made comfortable by artificial needs, but by plain living and high thinking. The highest perfectional thinking for human society is suggested here by Sukadev Goswami, namely, sufficiently hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. For men in this age of Kali, when they have lost the perfect vision of life, this Srimad Bhagavatam is the torchlight by which we can see the real path. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhupada has commented on the Katamrita mentioned in this verse and has indicated Srimad Bhagavatam to be the nectarian message of the personality of Godhead. By sufficient hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, the polluted aim of life, namely lording it over matter, will subside, and people in general in all parts of the world will be able to live peacefully, of a peaceful life of knowledge and bliss. For a pure devotee of the Lord, any topics in relationship with his name, fame, qualities, entourage, etc., are all pleasing, and because such topics have been approved by great devotees like Narada, Hanuman, Nanda Maharaj, and other inhabitants of Vrindavan, certainly such messages are transcendental and pleasing to the heart and soul. And by constant hearing of the messages of Bhagavad Gita and later of Srimad Bhagavatam, one is assured herein by Srila Sukadeva Goswami that he will reach the personality of Godhead and render him transcendental loving service in the spiritual planet of the name Goloka Vrindavan, which resembles a huge lotus flower. Thus, by the process of bhakti yoga, directly accepted as suggested in this verse, by sufficient hearing of the transcendental message of the Lord, the material contamination is directly eliminated without one's attempting to com com contemplate the impersonal Virat con conception of the Lord. And by practicing bhakti yoga, if the performer is not purified from the material contamination, he must be a pseudo-devotee. For such an imposter, there is no remedy for being freed from material entanglement. Om Ajnana Timida. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the second canto, chapter, second, chap, second canto, second chapter of the Bhagavatam entitled, The Lord in the Heart. Om Ajnana Timida Syakina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pacharine Nirishesha Shunyavadi Pasyatyade Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. Those who drink through oral reception fully filled with the nectaring message of Lord Krishna the beloved of devotees purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment and thus go back home back to Godhead to the lotus feet of him, the personality of Godhead. This verse is very much similar, practically exact to one very powerful verse in the third canto of Bhagavatam, Satam Prasangam Mamma Virasam Bido Bhavanti Hidkarna Rasayana Kata. That simply by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the association of devotees, one becomes uh, free from all material tendencies and does that develops an attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service. This is the essence of Bhagavatam and the essence of the practice of Krishna consciousness. To hear and chant the glories of the Lord. The tendency of the conditioned souls in the material world is, natural tendency, is to want to hear the glories of somebody great. So newspapers, magazines, various types of media, television, radio, and everything else. Talk about great people, what are their accomplishments, what are their characteristics, 
people buy books. People even deify some of these people. I remember I was in, when I, in America, there's one place in America called Memphis, Tennessee. It's, um, it's in the southern states of America, and it's the uh, very southern west part of the state of Tennessee. The whole town is geared to Elvis Presley, even today. Elvis Presley has been, has left the world in the back in the 1950s, but he was one of the first to create rock and roll. And he was uh, quite a very powerful and charismatic person. So even today, I think on his birthday, they have a big festival and the whole town is there. And everything is centered around him, magazines, books, buttons, flags, you name it, they make it with his picture on it or something that he said or did or sang. It's like a, you know, it's like a Mahotsava for, uh, you know, a, a famous rock and roll singer who eventually died a very inglorious death, too, unfortunately. So, yeah, people want to glorify great people. But that kind of glorification doesn't really satisfy people, nor does it get one free from the anxieties of the material world. Here's the formula here, um, the word drink. Sometimes when you drink something, it's something that is taken quite quickly. When you eat, you eat more slower, but when you drink, you drink faster, right? So the word is drinking through oral reception. So when people hear, when devotees hear the nectarian activities of the Lord, especially about his pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham, the ears become alert, and then the mind becomes eager to hear and chant, to hear more and more and more. And through this process, it says this is the way to go back home, back to Godhead. Why? There's a couple of things that are happening with this hearing process. One is that because it is transcendental sound vibration, not material. Material sound vibration cannot change anything. In fact, it only pollutes the environment, creates a type of sound vibration that causes people to become very, what we say, uh, disturbed in mind. Or if they're not disturbed in mind, after some time they get tired of it and want to do something else, hear something different. It becomes old. Even the best, you see, Maybe when you were growing up, you understood that certain uh, songs that were on the radio were very popular. I remember that when I was a kid. They used to have the rock and roll hit parade, and we would listen to the songs and see which song was number one. And then after some we weeks, another song would climb up to the charts and become number one. And then people would buy the records and... You know, it was just like, but after a while, it, it didn't. You get a little tired. Something new comes. You get interested in that, and then you get tired of that, and something new comes. So there's no, there's no say, there's no satisfaction. That's why they say in the material world, uh, there's satiation without satisfaction. In the spiritual world, there is satisfaction without satiation. Satiation means full. So the more you hear the transcendental topics of the Lord, you never get tired of it. You're never full. You never say, well, that's enough. That's I've heard enough. No, the devotees wants to hear more and more and more. And each time it's satisfying, but never enough. Where in the material world, something goes on and on and on. And then after people get tired of it and there's no satisfaction, so they go to something else. So that's the difference. Why? Because everything about the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very attractive. His names, qualities, forms, pastimes. Therefore, Maharaj Parikshit, which is the basis of the speaking of this Bhagavatam, is hearing from Sukadeva Goswami, and he's not tiring. He hasn't eaten, he hasn't slept, he hasn't tried to take in any water, 
his ears are so much absorbed in hearing the pastimes and activities of the Lord and the philosophy that centers around the Lord's activity that all he wants to do is hear more. He never gets tired. He's six days he's listening. Finally, on the end of the sixth day, Sukadev Goswami says to Maharaj Parikshit, Maharaj, would you like a break? Maybe drink a little water, something? And what was the response from uh, Maharaj Parikshit? Oh, now you're about to begin the 10th canto. This is where I'm. my ears will become even more eager to hear. So now uh, he doesn't even want to hear about not hearing. He just wants to hear more and more. Now this is his um, this is his attraction. So this happens to all of us once we develop a taste for hearing. And how do you develop a taste for hearing? By hearing. <laughs> Prabhupada says here, if by hearing, and a person does not actually become purified, then that person is a pretender. It's a pretender. Why? Prabhupada makes a very strong statement that. It's artificial. You're actually really not a real devotee because this process is so powerful that if you do it right and absorb yourself in the process of hearing, you will become purified and you will develop an, uh, an amazing attraction, a tense attraction for the, for the personality of Godhead. It's such a powerful process. And especially when you hear from pure devotees, then that then that nectar even has greater potency because it's added by their own spiritual potency as it says sukadev goswami the word sukha means parrot so parrot means one who repeats but if a parrot touches a piece of fruit with its beak that piece of fruit becomes sweeter that's the quality of a parrot so a particular type of bird. So here, Sukha, Deva, Goswami, when he touches this nectar of the pastimes and activities of the Lord, it becomes sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So when we hear directly from great souls, such as Sukha, Deva, Goswami, and, and of uh, who else, Narada Muni, Lord Brahma, they all speak the glories of the Lord in the Bhagavatam. We get more and more of attraction to hear and what does that affect? And then uh, one is no longer really affected by the material energy anymore. Although they're still in the material energy, they become free from the contamination of the material energy. Prabhupada begins the purport in a different way. He says that the reason why the material, people in material energy suffer is because they want to control the material energy. He calls it lording it over. The word lord it over means try to become the master of material energy. But there's only one master, and that is Krishna. Ek, ekala Isha Krishna, Asabrita. There's only one master, and he, Maya Dakshena Prakriti, Suyate Sachara Charam, Hetu Nanedakonteya Jigavi Parvipartante. That this material energy is my energy. Mama Maya, he says, Mama Maya Duratyaya, and it works under my direction. So when people try to take the position of Krishna and try to control this material energy, they get controlled by it. It's interesting how material energy works. You try to control it, it controls you. So the idea is stop, stop trying to control the material energy and try to control your mind and senses by engaging your mind and senses in the, in the service of the Lord. And then the material energy will automatically work to support your activities. When we try to control the material energy, what happens? We try and we, we try, we make experiments to exploit the material energy. And through that exploitation, we create more and more problems. And just like, you know, they're trying to, you know, drill into the earth to get natural gas and oil. But the earth is becoming somewhat uh, resistant to all this drilling. And so far you have so many earthquakes, you have so many material calamities as a result of these things. 
and then they destroy, they destroy the water supply. I saw a movie about about well, five years ago, how showing how when they drill for natural gas under the earth, it contaminates the water supply. And people in the area, their whole water supply is destroyed. And it was such a graphic movie that the way they displayed it, that people were turning on their faucets and they could light, they put a match underneath their faucet and it would flare up. You know, when you put gas to fire, well, that's where the water comes out, the sink, when you, yeah, when you turn on and it comes out of that pipe, that's called the faucet. And so, uh, yeah, there was like big bursts of flames coming from a match just because what was coming out of their water supply was gas instead of water. <laughs> and people would have to move. The whole, whole areas, miles and miles of earth was destroyed by this natural gas drilling. So this is what happens when they try to exploit the earth. And Prabhupada says here they create so many problems. And Prabhupada said, if you just live na naturally and practice Krishna consciousness, all the necessities of life will be automatically supplied by the Lord. He says, you make a little endeavor, maybe you have to grow some food or milk some cows like that or pick some fruit from the tree. That's a little endeavor to get food. But they make big, big arrangements, you know, these big factory farmings and which again exploits the earth and creates more and more problems. Um, but there's enough food for everyone. There's enough everything for everyone. All natural resources are supplied by the Lord. But when people become sinful and exploit the earth more and more, what happens is there's shortages. And when there's shortages, there's also calamities. And when there's calamities, people are suffering. Just like now, what are they trying to do? They're trying to create this 5G. You've heard about it, 5G. They have 4G, which is some kind of internet situation around the world to increase the power of re receptivity all around the world with this, all these different towers and electric. And so it'll, it's just people in the area of that they are experimenting for 5G. Where was 5G first started? Does anybody know? China, what city? Wuhan. Wuhan was the first experiment for 5G. <laughs> That's a fact. The place where the whole uh, coronavirus started came into the city where they first experimented with the 5G. <laughs> Interesting, huh? And I was just talking to a good friend of mine in Italy. He was telling me they're setting up these 5G towers now, and people in the area are getting sick already. Whole areas, people are feeling sick and are complaining. Will they stop? Well, if they don't, you're going to have coronavirus is just a small little, what we say, appetizer for what will come on next. Now, the, the next epidemic will be much more devastating than this one. Well, they just keep exploiting the earth. They keep exploiting the living entities in the earth, killing animals. And therefore, they wonder why there's so many problems in the world. <laughs> because the earth is meant to supply the needs of the living entities according to the arrangement of the Lord. And the Lord supplies if people are just pious, not even if they are religious, if they're just pious, if they're not sinful, they get everything they need. What to speak of being a devotee. But if you get become a devotee, then Krishna directly supplies everything. You see, no one, no devotee situation around the world is there any scarcity in this, in this virus. Devotees are getting everything they need. Not only that, they're distributing food to others. Just like in India, in India right now, there's big, big mass food distributions going on all over India, and the devotees are the biggest part of it. And we're supplying over one, over 12 million plates of prasadam all around India every day. 
12 million. Devotees work from morning to night light in many cities, sometimes supplying 100, 200,000 per So there's no shortage for the devotees. <laughs> devotees always can come up with resources. Why? Because, because Krishna is supplying whatever they need for, for their service and for their personal needs. So therefore, if we live according to the principle as, it, as directed by the Lord, simple living, high thinking, instead of trying to rip the earth of all of its resources and somehow package it and sell it as a profit. Medicine, food, education should not be in the hands of profit. All these things must be supplied uh, this is Vedic culture. Vedic culture would give education free, health health care free, food supplies were always there. People were taking it from the earth by, by by natural by natural means through various types of farming. So, but now they put all these things, which are the natural resources that people live from day to day, in the hands of profit. So, what are they doing? They're making all kinds of profit simply from the basic needs of people and therefore the earth is getting more and more exploited so we live in a very crazy time so what is the solution we need to spread the, to spread the glories of the lord and teach people how to live in a very simple way as devotees we should learn how to live very simple we're forced to live a little more simple now in this uh, present situation with this pandemic um, it's kind of a little bit of a lesson on how much you actually need just to live we don't need cars we don't need you know big big buildings we don't need you know various types of technology and electronics all this stuff is all just polluting the earth just like plastic plastic how do they make plastic one of the biggest ingredients from plastic is oil. There's so much oil in plastic. Where do they get the oil? From the earth. They're trying to get more and more places where they can get drilled oil so they can keep their plastic going. And it's interesting. It's quite interesting. The place where coronavirus stays the longest is on plastic. <laughs> if that disease goes on certain surfaces, it goes away according to the surface but if it put it on plastic it lasts for a long time <laughs> it's plastic Prabhupada said is never clean he never liked plastic in our temple he said we use plastic for plates we use plastic for for serving containers he never like plastic he said you can never clean plastic it is so contaminating <laughs> So, you know, so this is what society is doing. It's just polluting the whole world simply for a profit margin. Anyway, so, but here's the solution, and devotees know. Spread the glories of the Lord and create more and more opportunities to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. As we do that, the heart becomes purified, the mind becomes attracted to Krishna, and all material sufferings become what we say, conspicuous by their absence do devotees suffer sometimes we get a little sick because of whatever reason but that's the worst thing the devotees have otherwise there's no suffering there's no anxiety people in the material world they live in mental anxiety all the time why because they're so struggling just to uh, just to get things that they don't really need and when they do get them, it doesn't make them happy in the first place. It might fulfill some mental attraction, but it doesn't really provide the needs that they're looking for. But devotees can be happy in any situation. Right? We're not even we don't have any cars. We have a car, but we don't use it. <laughs> right? Food is still being supplied by Krishna through the through various arrangements, everything is still there. So there's no there's no scarcity of anything. The only scarcity, as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would say, is that the only scarcity is Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so how do we overcome that? 
Here's the verse. This chapter, the Lord in the heart, is such a powerful chapter. In fact, Prabhupada liked this chapter so much that he asked the devotees to create a second, a separate book and make it a chapter in itself. You can find it. It's not circulated so much, but there's devotees to have it. There's a book that says the Lord in the heart. And what is it? The second chapter of the second canto. This is a this chapter it was so important that Prabhupada actually inspired the devotees to create print this chapter separately and read it and distribute it. And what does it end with? In the first ver the, the previous verse, and this verse complement each other. Just to hear and chant the nectaring message of the Lord and become free from all material enjoyment and go back home back to Godhead. So devotees have to arrange their life to take time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. We need to take time to read, to hear. So otherwise, if we don't, although we're doing so many practical services, which are very important and still transcendental, we won't get that higher taste. The higher taste comes from hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Especially, as Prabhupada said, Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam, of course, we have Chaitanya Charitamrita. And many of the works of the Goswamis are being translated by the devotees and made available, which are some of the nectarian pastimes of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. So there's no shortage of transcendental literature. Sometimes we feel there's a shortage of time to take advantage of that, but sometimes when we get sick, we find, oh, well, gee, I got sick, now I can read. <laughs> I can read more. <laughs> and sometimes it becomes a, with devotees always take advantage of a reverse situation. They get a little sick or something happens, and now we have more time for reading, more time for chanting like that. So. But in any case, <clears throat> it is the, <clears throat> it is the, principle throughout all shastras that the glories of devotional service culminate in hearing and chanting the lord's transcendent especially krishna's pastimes in sri vrindavan Dham, which are the essence of all nectarine mellows in spiritual life they are the heart because when we hear and chant sri vrindavan Dham, then we understand deeper what is the nature of the personality of godhead his real nature, he has many natures, but his true nature is revealed in his mood as Krishna in the Vrindavan down. And that is the sweetest of all nature. That's why it's called Madhurya. Madhurya means sweet. So that Madhurya is Sri Vrindavan Dham, the, the highest principle of spiritual uh, sweetness is to hear and chant the glories of Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Okay, so we'll stop here for any questions, comments. Yes, uh, yes Sarvana. Mm Well, we, we probably will never be able to create the ideal Vedic society, but we can take elements from the Vedic society as the principles that we can live on 
and then practice Krishna consciousness based on that. So people are becoming more and more attached because they are somehow or other becoming allured by what is out there on the mainstream market. And what is advertising? Advertising is the way to get you attached. This, the advertising industry is one of the biggest industries in the entire world. And they put so much time, energy, and what we say, resources into thinking of ways to create new products and to sell these same products. Just like I'll give you an example. They have a way of monitoring your computer and see how you, what is your lifestyle so they know what you like in life. And then they use advertising principles to go onto your computer and, and send you these particular types of products that you, they know you're interested in because they've studied your lifestyle. This is a fact. I know this for sure because I know people who actually do it as, a, as an occupation. They study people's lifestyles, see what they like to buy, what they like to wear, what they like to do, and then they sell, they send products to these people through the media to attract them to buy more of the same. So there's a whole plan of uh, arrangements by the secular society to create a particular desire or to increase your desire for material things. And people, some, people fall into that. Even devotees fall into that, having to have the latest of everything. <laughs> we have to have the latest this and the latest that, and the latest watches, the latest this, the latest computers, the latest everything. <laughs> So, yeah, we have to be careful not to become allured by the attraction that looks like something we can use in devotional service, but actually when you come right down to it, it's not even needed or necessary. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so with that type of wrong mentality, it becomes very hard to live simply, mm -hmm. which is the basis of Vedic culture. So that's why Prabhupada wanted these farm communities and to teach and to show, not only to teach, but to show how to live according to what Krishna has provided through nature. Nature is amazing. What we get from nature is very small amount what nature can actually give. Because we don't live close to nature, we don't really know how much she can actually offer. Everything's there in nature. All you need in terms of food, in terms of medicine, in terms of, of natural resources, everything is there. You can build your houses, you can decorate your houses. You can live. And nature has provided everything. And animals, you know, every Vedic culture, people used to keep animals. Cows, horses, sometimes donkeys, and various other types of animals. Because animals would also uh, create a nice atmosphere within the environment. At the same time, many of them would provide certain things that are needed. So we're, we are somewhat separated from, we're separated from the earth, we're separated from the living entities on the earth, we're separated from each other as individuals, and we're separated from our own self. Because we, we actually think that by supplying the needs to the body, we're actually supplying, we're doing good for, for myself. So yeah, simple living is somewhat <clears throat> lost in today's culture. Therefore, uh, Prabhupada's plan was to bring it back through 
these nat these farm communities and create an environment where devotees can learn to live simply and devotees are already doing it it's not like it's something that it's in the future it's already being done but it's only being done by a small part of our society i mean everything's there <clears throat> One philosopher says, I get all my ideas on philosophy when I milk a cow. Isn't that amazing? He wrote that as a statement. When I'm milking a cow, all my ideas on, on the different philosophical things that I'm, I'm working with become clear. It's a fact. If you associate with cows, You'll find there's always, you'll always feel happy and peaceful. But to speak of what they provide for the earth, from the earth, like that. <clears throat> so we've lost, <clears throat> we don't really know what simple living really means and how, how, what we say, how much it flourishes and how much it can actually provide the needs of the living entities and the happiness that people are looking for. So, but, <clears throat> so we, we uh, are developing these attachments based on all the new gadgets that come out like that. I read one article, I don't know how true it is now, <clears throat> but there's a thing called, the, in America, there's this organization called the Patent Society. It's a government controlled organ. Patent means that before you can put a product on the market, it has to be approved because they evaluate whether it's hazardous or not, you know. So from the patent office, they give statistics of how many items come to their office per week. So this was a few years ago, 250 items per new items per week come to the patent office. Mm -hmm. One person became a millionaire, multi-millionaire, simply by creating a bag where you can keep pizza warm. Multi-millionaire. He was thinking, well, all these pizza shops, people call up and they order pizza. So by the time they used to deliver it from the shop to where to your home, it was you know, it was hardly warm or cool. So this guy came up with his brilliant idea. He made a, a bag which keeps the pizza completely hot so you can get it hot when it comes from the thing. He became a multimillionaire simply by making this bag. <laughs> That's what people do. <laughs> Just to keep my pizza hot, <laughs> I pay extra money. <laughs> So they're always thinking of new things, you know, new things, you know. And the same thing that's already there, they make it in a different way, you know. Just like you have a pen, and then you have a red pen, and you have a blue pen, and you have a green pen. So they make one pen that has red, blue, green, yellow, and all the colors in one. You can buy one pen like that, you know. You know, so they're always thinking, and they're, the materialists are always thinking, what are people using and how can we create it in another way that's more attractive, more useful, like that. So they, they spend all their time, and then they make these products, and then they sell them. Mm -hmm. And people buy them. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, because they made the separation. They separate natural living from the goal of life. <clears throat> the natural living is the support of Krishna consciousness. I mean, you can still live in a nice building with nice arrangements, you know, and still be Krishna conscious. Prabhupada said, if you're attached to living under a tree, that attachment can cause you not to be Krishna conscious. And if you're attached to living in a palace, that can also cause you. So attachment to anything material is what is detrimental. But natural living has certain qualities in it that helps you to, to live according to your nature or according to how Krishna arranged for you to live nicely. So there's an advantage in there. But if people don't take up Krishna consciousness, it's like, you know, it's like having a sandwich w with nothing in it, just two pieces of bread. The, bed, the essence of life is the Tato Brahma Jigyasa, to inquire into the, the goal of life and to practice the goal of life. So if we're not doing that and we're just living simply, nicely, we might find we have a little bit of health we have good health and because that simple living is healthy life. But ultimately, you, you, you'll take another birth anyway. And you might just wind up living simply as, a, as an animal on the same land that you were living before as a human being. <laughs> so what is the use of simple living without, what we say, Krishna consciousness? Better to live in a palace surrounded by a lot of opulence and chant Hare Krishna than to live on a farm simply and have no Krishna practice, you know, no 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 spiritual practice. We're not trying to make a nice arrangement in the material world. We're trying to uh, create an arrangement in the material world that's con that's conducive to our practice of Krishna conscious, but Krishna consciousness is the goal, that's all. Mm -hmm. The goal is not mm -hmm. simple living. <laughs> Question back there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, that was, not, that was a good question. <clears throat> Important question. Well, the question, the, the statement is saying if you practice it right, if you do it right, it works. But if you don't do it right, or, or you do it in, a, or you do it incompletely, you won't get the full benefit from it. You have to do it right. So what the verse is, Satam Prasangam Mamavira Sambido. In other words, Hear and chant the glories of the Lord in the association of others who are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And depending on how much a particular person is contaminated will depend on how much they need to hear. Some people will need to hear more and more, and some people will immediately their spiritual energy will be awakened. This is all due to previous activities. So some people need to hear for a longer time before they actually start to feel the effects of it. As we say, 
if you have a disease of jaundice, you give it sugar cane, sugar cane juice, it tastes bitter. But sugar cane juice is the cure for jaundice. So you keep administering the medicine, and gradually, as the, as the medicine is working, the flavor of the medicine changes from being bitter to sweet, which is its natural taste. So it may not be sweet in the beginning, but if we continue to hear regularly, and then make an effort to hear in the association of devotees, gradually that will come. That sweetness will start to come. But another thing is that if we're also hearing mundane things and making that a big part of our life also, we're watering down the effects of our transcendental hearing and chanting. Therefore, we have to stop do hearing the, the wrong things and connect with the direct spiritual activity. You can't mix them both. So I'm hearing Krishna consciousness, but I'm also hearing about, you know, so many other things that are not Krishna conscious. So um, that will slow down, and maybe even cause one to give up hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Make a vow. They say, I'm only, only going to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. I'm not going to hear anything else. Do that for a little while, and you'll see immediately. Your attraction will become stronger and stronger. Then you'll look forward to hearing it. But you have to stop this other stuff. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Yes. The question is science and technology are they improve? That's we that's what we think. <laughs> that's the that's the modern propaganda. <laughs> because we have no no uh, uh, knowledge of what it was like thousands of years ago. <laughs> Prabhupada tells the story of how when he was a young man, he had a toothache. And nothing, it was such a pow painful toothache, it was giving him a lot of trouble. And so uh, he tried everything short of pulling the tooth out to stop the ache. And nothing. So he went to one Kabiraj in the forest. The man was in the forest. He, he just put a little some leaves on the tooth and the leaves drew out all the germs from the from the from the gum and the tooth was saved and the pain was gone Prabhupada tells that about himself <laughs> so they think they they have created so many nice things like that But all they're doing is create more and more diseases, that's all. They fix one and they create another one. A, all these pandemics that have been SARS, AIDS, uh, Ebola, they're all due to, uh, you know, trying to exploit material energy, that's all. They're all related to exploiting animals. Swine flu, bird flu. What was what was AIDS? AIDS was AIDS has killed more than three three hundred million people. 
all around the world for the last 20 to 30 years. What is AIDS? It's coming from monkeys because they try to uh, exploit monkeys <laughs> and they spread a disease, yeah. So there, you know, what, what, there's no real advancement. But disease can never be stopped because disease is a part of the material energy. Janma Mitya Jaravadi is built in. Birth, death, disease, and old age is part of life. You can minimize diseases, but you can't eradicate disease completely. It's not possible. Because it's part of this material energy. There will always be disease. But it doesn't mean there's always have to be epidemics. There always there'll always be fevers, cold, flu, things like that. <laughs> there'll be breakdowns in the in the metabolism of the body where people get sick because old age produces disease. As you get old, disease becomes more and more prominent. So disease will always be there. You don't, if you want to solve disease, as Prabhupada said, go back home, back to Godhead. We get a spiritual body, and then there's no disease, there's no old age, there's no death. So science has contributed a little bit of something to the welfare of human beings, but in proportion to all the damages they've done, <laughs> it's quite insignificant. Okay, so we'll stop here. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.